everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. You know, I have a feeling that we've done this before. Uh, yeah, I know. I have a weird feeling of deja vu. I don't know, it's probably nothing. An awesome brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. Oh my god, Luna, 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 she's in this comic, but only a little. <laughs> Uh, right, because we are going to be talking about Friends Forever, issue number 14, starring Princess Luna and Spike. Or should I say Mina the Dragon and Spike with special guest star Princess Luna? Well, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Written by Jeremy Whitley with art by Agnes Garboska. So in this comic, Princess Luna recruits Spike to help her in Philadelphia when a conflict arises between the local population of dragons and the police department. Apparently there's been some fires, crimes, etc., and the police are blaming it on the local dragons. I thought it was a fire nation. No. <laughs> we don't want to blame it on the fire nation. They're still recovering from that whole Avatar incident. <laughs> Blue giant people. <laughs> so, I... This is... This is one of those comics that, you know... They, I don't know, it's weird, because there is something that, there is something that the writer does on it, on it, that I'm not sure if it's the right thing, but we're gonna touch upon that as the review goes on. But first I want to hear your guys' first impressions, and I want to hear the impression of one person in particular in this, in this review right here, because he might or might not have done a video on it. And I want to hear more about what he has to say about it. So, uh, Silver, what did you think of this comic? Well, first, you want to hear an impression of, of Silver Quill? Hi, I'm Silver Quill. I like to blow myself up with silly slapstick and talk about a kid's TV show. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that, how you say you like to blow yourself. That's nice. <laughs> er my. Er my. Oh, well. You know, hey, the secret's hey. out, the secret's out, guys. We never got the real Silver Quill. We just got a sound alike. <laughs> Hey, hey, if it was good enough for Metalocalypse, it's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, uh, anyway, but, yeah. but uh, th- well, this comic has a lot of significance because it's, I view it as uh, the Spike Micro 2.0. It's really about Spike. Uh, it's a much better showing than the Spike Micro where he was caring for the <sighs> tadpole people. But it suffers from burying the friends forever. Uh, title because Friends Forever implies a dual spotlight. Luna's there to get the ball rolling and to her leaving Spike will uh, set the tone for uh, increased stakes and greater crisis but it also denies her a role in the story and so uh, it's not really the split focus that makes a lot of the Friends Forever stories more enjoyable. The Spike and Celestia one uh, is particularly standout which I'm afraid Luna is getting overshadowed by her sister again. Look out for Nightmare Moon. And it also has a slightly personal uh, significance in that on a Twitter post, author uh, Jeremy Wheatley said he'd gone down the rabbit hole and uh, watched a fan review, mine, of his comic, and he found it entertaining. I, I didn't get a sense that he was at all offended by my critiques or commentary. Really? That's awesome. I, I was very tickled and stunned. <laughs> I here's the here's the thing about uh, doing reviews, guys. I never expect DHX or Hasbro or IDW, anyone associated with them, to ever see my reviews. It's not. It'd be absurd for me to think I could lecture them on how to write their episodes. When I critique, my hope is that the audience, you know, hopeful writers, future animators might take away 1% of what I've said and maybe expand on it to make even better stuff down the future. Even if I contribute to that in a fraction, that's pie in the sky, great goal. And uh, if I can get people to have a good laugh along the way, so much the better. Well, I am super happy that he actually didn't take offense on what you had to say about the comic, which is something not that many people do. Uh, they will get angry, they will get upset, or they will claim copyright on their part and take the video down, which is something that many many uh, Hollywood production companies do. Mm-hmm. They they don't like to take the criticism, so they ah rawr, angry, take down the video. Uh, but I am glad that Jeremy Whitley actually was humble enough to, to to watch it and actually enjoy it. 
uh, well, I'm pretty sure he will agree with uh, with a few things that you had to say. But the, so the, the the comic in itself, like your opinion on it, aside from uh, from it being a a friends forever, uh, a friends forever with uh, it's not really a friends forever. It's a it's a micro. It's a micro in my eyes. Yeah, uh, or a... or perhaps it would have flourished under the main series title as a one shot. Uh, mm-hmm. Either either way, um, I like. The setting is created. There are continuity issues with the show, but really I've always viewed the comics and the show as separate. So I don't, I'm aware of the conflict, but I'm not really hung up about it. Enjoy the, the, the scenery, not as always enchanted by some of the characters. And most of all, though, I appreciate that it's trying to tackle a very real life issue, not dumbing it down, uh, for the audience. However, also I wish that the ending hadn't been what's often described as a magical third option, a ducking of that hard confrontation. Hmm. Yeah, because as we stated on last week's review, you cannot have you cannot have something that will make either side look bad. You need to have a finite, oh, we're going to redeem everyone involved in this right away. Yeah. We're going to make everybody happy and blame it on a, on a Deus Ex Machina. Yes, and I'm going to, and I'm, after my rather passionate critique of uh, of Princess Spike last week, I'm glad to have a Spike discussion where he's he's done better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's better written. So, yeah. what about you, Norman? What did you make of this comic? Well, I how do I put this? I do agree with you guys that the Friend Forever label on sorry, I do agree with you guys that the Friends Forever label on this scenario here is a bit wasted. We only get to see the interaction with Spike and Celestia for only about 10% of the whole comic. And how do I put this? My point of view with the Friends Forever series is always about the comic should at least have about 80 to 100% involving those two characters together. Their, their interaction, really. Like, you, if you have an interaction between two characters, it should be them most of the time. A good example of this is uh, Rarity and Applejack. Those two ponies were in it for 100% of the comic. So, that's good. That's how I want to see my friends forever in the future. But this one, as it is, not a very good friends forever issue, but as a comic itself, it's okay. It has some ups and downs here and there. And the thing that it proposed to the audience, it's a bit touchy. No one really wants to touch upon that. And Jeremy here, he was brave to touch on this. Well, brave, yes. I don't think it was the right idea to do that, though. Mm-hmm. And that's actually, I think we should talk about this right away, is that with uh, this comic, it presents something that is a very interesting subject, especially considering that it's something that's been, you know, uh, kind of going on, at least over there in the US, but it can happen all over the world, really, mm-hmm. where you have two uh, groups of people that are so different between each other that there is... Conflict arising. No, no, doesn't matter how much you try to be uh, m- uh, dealing with the situation. There is never a moment of peace, and that's a constant of like that. That's human condition. That is something that will never stop. That is something that will keep going even when we are not here anymore. But there are things that are, can be touched upon a kids' uh, comic or a kids' show, and there are other things that like shouldn't. And pushing a political agenda, I don't think it's a good idea. And I don't know how hard his political agenda was being pushed on the writing of this script. But I'm not entirely sure how well this one helps to present the overall situation. Like, uh, I, to be honest, I don't know if either of the groups was presented as more of a hero or a villain. But I remember the, the, the main Hatton, Pol- the Philadelphia police and especially Princess Luna getting really upset with the dragons. And being the dragons the ones that end up saving the day. With the ponies almost doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to think that this comic is trying to present the dragons as the victims, then become heroes. 
but it really doesn't help, like Silver said, that the comic ends up going for the third option that doesn't paint either of the groups as one of the responsible ones, or at least one of the uh, individuals in the groups as the responsible behind the, the behind the fires. What do you guys think about this subject? The whole let's let's make a political statement in a, in a comic book for little kids. Well, there's a lot of personal life that uh, comes into factor here. So before we dive into the comic proper, hey, this is what I observed through Twitter and Derpy Boru posting Twitter. There's n- many things you shouldn't observe through du- Derpy Boru. Many, oh, yeah. <laughs> many things. Uh, so here's, as I understand it, Jeremy Wheatley is a, a father of a, a daughter who is a mixed race. She's black and white uh, ancestry, or I should say Anglo. I, I apologize. I'm not great at political correctness. I'm not Double good either. Go on. So, Go on. But his daughter has a mixed heritage, and he has fought very hard to make sure that young girls, and especially uh, young girls with African ancestry, get a representation in entertainment. And this is something that a lot of people don't get about about uh, entertainment or reviews and the critiquing thereof, um, stories have weight in shaping a person's identity. We teach our kids through parables. We demonstrate life lessons through tales. We champion ideals with either historical accounts, which have a certain fiction of their own, and also uh, just out and out, you know, uh, pure fiction, Lord of the Rings. Uh, and Narnia. Both have very strong religious uh, themes, but they're presented in a fantasy environment. So Jeremy Wheatley, he sees the episode Dragon Quest, and he hates it. At least that's the impression I got. Actually, to quote, he said it was very toxic message. That somehow yeah. your race defines your identity and how you're supposed to act. All dragons are jerks because they're dragons. And then there's Spike, who's rejecting his dragonhood to be a pony. And now it's it's an interesting take because I viewed that episode as more divided along gender lines. All dragons are boys, and Spike would rather be with the girls because they're better. Uh, that's the message I took away from it. So again, you can two people can watch the same uh, show, read the same story, and take away different opinions. So he wrote this comic as sort of his counterbalance to. Uh, to Dragon Quest, and also to, as an encouragement for his daughter that race and ancestry do not define you as a person. That's for you to do, or that not to let a few bad examples become the defining trait. Now, Mina in this comic, many labeled her a social justice warrior, and I, I've kind of gone on at length. I feel like I'm usurping this review as well. Mm. But people lash out in Twitter, and I think... Jerry was so close and so passionate about this story that he he pushed back on Twitter. And I wish it weren't true, but when you do that, the other the the hecklers have won because they're 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 getting a rise out of you. And I think he the wiser choice would have been to give some time and take a breather and not push back right away. So that's as far as I understand it from this perspective, and I'm sorry that I've monopolized the uh the podcast thus far. <laughs> what? No, I love listening to your opinion. I actually agree with that. Uh, my only problem is that, um, well, I completely understand why Jeremy will want to do something like that. Uh, but My Little Pony has never been a show that is all about being either defined by racial differences or even, hell, I will, I will even say even social differences because we have seen that there are friendships and relationships regardless of status, condition, or where they came from. For example, the, the, the one that, the one that I'm thinking of right now, out of all the ones, is actually the marriage between Shannon Armour and Princess Cadence. It's like, Cadence is royalty. She's like, all, all the way up there. Shannon Armour started as a grant in the royal guard. Like, mm-hmm. what will, uh, what, uh, will these two will have to do? To get together. Now, if you read the comics, of course, you know exactly how things <laughs> go. But from what we know on the show, there's really no discussion about, oh, I am going to judge you depending on where you are coming from. It's a very, it's a very non-cynical show. 
uh, My Little Pony. When you bring up an issue as cynical as racial differences, it gets a spiky, no pun intended. Uh, so oh, Take the pun, take the pun. No, seriously, no pun intended. But yeah, it's like, I like that Jeremy Willis, uh, I like Jeremy Willis' intentions. I don't think I am all that, all that uh, happy with the execution. I'm a person that don't really care if you're black or white, Chinese, Indian, and whatnot. I don't really see it that way. I'm personally for me, I look at people if they annoy me or not. If you're annoying me, then I don't like you. Simple as that. But for My Little Pony as a whole, like what you guys said with the message that it is telling, to me, when I see the show, I don't see. Dragons are this way, ponies are that way, and griffins are this, and donkeys are that, and zebras are that way. I, I don't see that. To me, I just see characters. I don't see stereotypes. When I watch the show, I see black and white. When there's grey in the middle, uh, things get iffy. And things get hard for me to defend or state my opinion on something. In this comic, it's hard for me to pick one side because both sides are doing their thing. Like the dragons are in a small community and the ponies, well, they are the law. Insert Judge Dredd joke here. And they're just doing their job. You know what? It would have been, now that I think about it, it would have been a much interesting scenario to have a, one of the policemen being a dragon. Oh yeah, that, that'll be cool. But that's where Spike yeah, comes Or like, in. not having to, not having to have a, yeah, but Spike is more like, oh, you were handpicked by, well, you were hoofpicked by Luna because you are also a dragon. Well, technically here, from my point of view, when I see this comic now, Spike is the in-between. He is conflicted. He lives as a pony, but he is a dragon. And when the dragon, when he go talks to other dragons, they don't talk back to him. And yeah. I, I do see the conflict there. If no. you're trying to get conflict, yes, it's no. there. Uh, you see, Norman, this is not like when the U.S. military were scouting the areas of the of the U.S. for like establishment and all that, and they will have Indian scouts with them. They didn't have Indian scouts with them because they will make friends with the other tribes, but because they knew the territory and they knew where they were going and what they were doing. Being uh, there to, like, you know, for uh, diplomatic uh, issues between the tribes and all that, that was a helpful side effect, but it was not the purpose. Spike's purpose in this comic is just there because, oh, you're a dragon, like these other dragons, you go talk to the dragons while we go slumber at the police station and do nothing. And that's that's probably the issue, is that we should have to be seeing more of the policemen doing police work. Instead, we are, we are just following Spike, we are having a one single perspective. This is why this comic is not a Friends Forever issue. It's uh, it's a it's a mi- it's like what Silver said. It's micro two point mm-hmm. Well, that's that's what I that's why I agree with you guys because what we are given here is just from Spike's point of view, where he just scouts around and tries to solve the problem from his point of view. We don't see what Luna's doing. Luna probably doing some paperwork research and talking to the chief of police, but we don't see the bigger picture here. From what we're given, we just got what's presented to Spike, which is, well, in our eyes, the truth. That moment in the police station where the chief of police said everything negative about what Spike would say, and Spike did that thing, and conflict starts. Like, the chief of police says, oh, we couldn't trust this Spike. He's a dragon. He's, of course, going to support the dragons, and so on, and blah, blah, blah. And Luna being disappointed at, at Spike because, oh, you shamed me, my champion, and whatnot. Uh, you know, I realize we've, we've talked so much about the, the, the background. We haven't actually gotten into the actual. I know. Episode. Yeah, we are, we, we are talking about the, we are talking about the, the theme on the comic, but I think that it, it is worth talking about it because it is a big part. Uh, we are, well, we are going to be exposed to it more, uh, when we get to the comic book show. But yeah, okay, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the let's talk about the comic in itself. Yeah, I, I think it's best to get the nitty gritty part of the way for, out of the way first and jump into the fun parts. Oh, we might, we might actually bring it back again. We don't know. Give and take, give and take. Well, but yeah, so the comic starts with Spike 
going back to Dragon Grounds as the dragons are like, you know, again, bullying him and mocking him and making fun of him. And suddenly, out of nowhere, comes Princess Luna, revealing that this, in fact, is a dream. As she burps green fire. Lovely. And apparently Luna needs, uh, of course, Spike's help to deal with this conflict in Philadelphia. So she takes him without leaving a note to Twilight, so she knows where her number one assistant is. And they reach Philadelphia, which looks exactly like any other city we have seen. Like, there is no difference between Philadelphia and Manhattan. I don't know. What, what would you guys think about this? this Honestly, part of the comic? are there any differences in town? It's like, um, this is based in the quote-unquote U.S. So, Silver, what do you think, man? I, I'm going to stand over here as the legions of Philadelphians attack you. Just going to be over here. Good. Hey, God, I am... God, God, God I'm, speed. You, I you, am you, Malaysian, you. so I got no idea how a town in New York would look like compared to a town in Philadelphia. So, I got no idea how they would... What's the difference? I'm just saying, you don't like people who annoy you when, when you get lynched by Philadelphians, you'll, you'll really be annoyed. Oh. Uh, ev- every town has its own unique landmarks, structures, atmosphere. I'll be honest, I've not actually been to Philadelphia in quite some time. And, or New York proper for that matter, the central city. Uh, I think New York is much more jam-packed, uh, a slightly more, slightly more aggressive energy to it. But it's not good to say that it's in it, that all cities are interchangeable because each one does have its own traits. And the show, at least, has had uh, a very good track record of accentuating the landmarks. It's almost to the point where they make up the whole cityscape. Uh, Rarity takes Manhattan being the best example. So Philadelphia doesn't really stand out in my eyes as a uh, a place. It's the characters within that really make it. Uh, Memorable. Not all of them in a positive way. Speaking of which, let's just talk about, you know, wah, hoo, wah, hoo, wah, hoo, wah, 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 do, do, yeah, no, 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 oh bat, god, it's out of bat, control. Bat, bat, it's out of control. Uh, but no, I'm I'm, going, I'm calling him Homestar. Uh, I know, I know. But... When you're calling him Homestar, you know, this is a reference to something that I didn't even watch, despite how old I am. I have no idea what Homestar running is. It's, <laughs> you're talking about that, right? Yep. We're yeah. talking about that. That's, I couldn't, I couldn't resist using that sound. Right. <laughs> it's impossible not to. It's impossible not to. And when you did it, I was so happy. Like, oh my god, he knows what I know. Yay! Oh, then. And then I called him out. I called him out for being drawn like a mare. <laughs> oh, he was not pleased. And give and give, neither was Jerry Pete. What really? Well, I mean, he's playing along with the joke. But, oh. uh, <laughs> there, there, there are a lot of uh, gender ambiguous oh. OCs in the fandom. It, it seems. <laughs> but uh, you know, the police make. A funny first impression. You know, first off, unicorn magic being used as, as police lights. That's clever. That's, <laughs> yep. that's just, that's just a fun use of it. And then to find out a guy just wants to be the siren, that's pony silliness. <laughs> uh, I, I forgot about that. It, it's been his long dream. Like, join the academy just to do that. <laughs> just to do that. And he, he'll even turn off like a, like a car alarm. Boop, boop. Oh, wow. You do. <laughs> this reminds me of the police academy that, Guy, I forgot who his name is. Like, who can do? Yeah, the, the 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 black guy who does all the different funny sounds. Yeah, <laughs> he's very much like him. Yeah, except that he only does the the the, the police know. siren sound. <laughs> oh, oh. Now on now on the opposite extreme, his heart is Officer Hardcase, who I've he's a jerk. They say, oh, he's lack of sleep. Twilight had lack of sleep, and all she did was try to mix ingredients. <laughs> well, uh, this is the stereotypical. Uh, you're renegade something I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're of the case, Makowski. Yeah. Give your badge and your and your piece. You're of the case. You're of the line. You just threaten a sub suspect. Uh, <laughs> off uh, to you to your house. No pay. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, come back, it's Kung, come back, Kung Fury. Oh, I love that scene. Yee, we need it's, to. It's, re- uh, we need to do a review of Kung Fury. Stereotypes one oh one. This comic, the same as with with this show, managed to kill a lot of stereotypes, including police stereotypes. 
I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think when it comes to writing police, Ted Anderson did a much better job in the Diamond Manhattan Mystery Diamond one <laughs> than uh, Jeremy Whitley did in this one. Well, and <laughs> yeah, no, no, please don't kill me, don't hurt me. But I think that the police was a lot more likable and a lot less uh, needing anger management <laughs> than in this issue. Well, the, because... the reason for that is James. Like, the reason for that is the police were doing their job. They were doing their bestest to solve the case, and yeah, they they, they were doing their job. In this so one, you're saying that Philadelphia is not as good as Manhattan when it comes to the police department. Hey, I'm just that so. saying that the police here or the comic tone here was going for a more comedic feel, and we get the over the top stereotypes. And yeah, it's funny to see uh police get like angry like take off sleep because he can't solve the case like grr you're off the case Kowalski and stuff like so that, that is funny oh yes. it's it's Makowski by the way M- hey, Mac- I'm Mac- using another character whatever I, I just bring in Triceracop we'll be good <laughs> <laughs> yes J- James is probably looking at his at his screen and wondering what are these two weirdos talking about no James. because I did watch Confury twice and I think it's an awesome movie and Triceracop okay, is kick ass <laughs> Okay, good. There we go. Crotch shot, crotch shot, crotch shot. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's that's brilliant. I love you, Triceratops. I love you too, Confury. <laughs> what a great movie. Uh, the, the, the phone shooting bullets. <laughs> <laughs> and we we've been derailed by awesomeness. Is that yeah? Can we just can we just talk about Kim Fury for the rest of it? Like we we can we can also make a a clickbait. Of a video, let's say, ah, oh, we're talking about My Little Pony. Ha ha, no, we're talking about Kung Fury. Uh, no. no okay, no, we need, we okay, seriously, we need to do, we need to do a dedicated show to that because that show is yeah, good. Yeah, we need to talk so... about, we need to talk about Kung Fury at, at length mm. because you can talk about, there are so much stuff in 30 minutes, but ponies, <laughs> issue number 14 of Friends Forever. Let's focus on that. I find it surprising how Luna just goes with the police and leaves a Spike on his own to go to this ghetto, the, the Dragon Town that takes place in Bedrock, <laughs> in the, the universe of the Flintstones, apparently. Uh, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. You have these, like, skyscrapers and, like, large buildings and all that. And then you have the slums. And the slums are not made out of metal or anything. They're made out of rock. I would say that's the slums. I would just say that's the equivalent of Chinatown. No, I that I know what they were going for. They, you know, when you have uh, the stereotypical ghetto is the ghetto that is like falling apart with like tin rooftops and uh, uh, like you know a bunch of hobos warming them, themselves again uh, uh, next to a uh, uh, <laughs> a can that is on fire or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, but this is so jarring. Like, look, I live in a country that has towns where people live in caves. Uh, yes, that's a thing. Okay. But that makes sense because we don't have skyscrapers next to the caves. <laughs> like, we have normal-sized houses or, like, rural houses, and then we have the caves. That's sensible. That makes sense. Here you have, like, the Empire State Building, and right next to it you have the Captain Caveman's house. How do they gel together? I would love to see this in the episode. Well, I, I'm still, I'm still getting over the Crystal Palace appointiness in rural Ponyville. So you know, feng shui, feng shui in Equestria is just all kinds of crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Don't you mean I, kung fu shui? <laughs> kung fu shui say. <laughs> kung fu shui say. Oh gosh. Just Can we get more offensive? A, <laughs> no, don't. This not. A bedrock in the in the claw is better than killing two birds with one chicken, <laughs> for it's hatched. <laughs> what? Exactly. Uh, no, let me go get my pointy hat and my strained eyes <laughs> and my so, yellow face makeup. <laughs> so no. let's see. Oh, okay, so let's just to recap. Norman's gonna die from p- pissed off Philadelphians. <laughs> Uh, James and I will be will be killed by everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? If the Wachowski siblings got away with hitting Cloud Atlas, I think we can get away with hitting this review, so we're fine. Oh. oh my gosh. I don't know. You and I didn't make the Matrix, though. Oh. No, but... Uh, 
Then again, they made Jupiter Rising. That might work against them. <laughs> we, we didn't. We didn't make the Matrix sequel either, so I think we're fine. Was it Jupiter said it's Jupiter stinking. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only person on the planet who actually liked that movie? Uh, Quite possibly. I'm I don't sorry, know. I think I... There, there will be no, there will be no middle ground this time. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's 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 weird because I think. I, Anything, anything with Eddie Redmayne to me is just win because he's the master of cheese and ham. He's like, he's so much fun with his outbursts of anger! <laughs> I create life! Uh, derail. We derail yes. again. That's what this comic is invoking. It's got so many pop culture references like Mina's cavalcade of comic book covers. <laughs> yeah. Pop culture reference within a pop culture reference because we see a statue of the power ponies in the TV, in the in the bookshop. Yeah, you know, I am I am with Silver on this one when he did his review of it. When you say that the character of Mina is very well presented, yes, she is way more likable than Princess Luna. And we only had like this comic to introduce her to introduce her to us. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mina here is well from Horacris. When we are first introduced to the character, she's a very welcoming person of dragon here because as a shopkeeper, you need to be uh, open and welcoming. So Jeremy got the character right on and well, as a character, spot on, very open, kind to the customer and then introduce new things to the customer. Spot on. And, well, since Spike is a dragon, and Spike never read any issue of any comic that stars a dragon as a lead, and, well, Mina introduced one and got the ball running. And then Spike asked about the whole fire incident. <sighs> yeah. Uh, we were waiting for you to talk. <laughs> That's it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. So, if we have an opening. I will say, uh, going, building a little bit off my review... I said that Mina would win more, would sway more hearts and minds if she crafted a, a better message. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is something that I've no, that I've noted in the debates over uh, feminism, racism, uh, other types of discrimination. Very often, the speaker is assuming that be, that they can talk at you and lecture, and you are meant to take it. Uh, without challenge, that if you raise a voice of question or uh, challenge, you are instantly taking the role of the racist or the the discriminator. Mm -hmm. And I find that incredibly unhealthy and unfair. Uh, Mina is not talking with Spike, she's lecturing him. And I think you you lose a lot of persuasive argument when you simply lecture a person rather than invite discussion. Well, that's usually what happens when someone is so passionate about something that it it's, it lets uh, they let it get to their heads, and that's something that everybody can be accused of, especially myself, actually, in many aspects. But that's something that also comes with the with the the territory. I mean, consider where Mina uh, grew up or uh, is uh, lives. Like she lives in Philadelphia, in one of the slums. Mm-hmm. Like surrounded by, uh, let's be fair, a bunch of stereotypes that she had to develop that kind of personality in order to, you know, survive. So I think that yes, she is lecturing Spike. She's been way too pig-headed about several things, but I think that's just the way that it's like it's the nurture versus nature kind of thing. I'm pretty sure that she, if she had grown up in a different environment, she'd be a completely different kind of person. Well, yeah. dragon. Well, uh, did, did... I don't. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. All I'm thinking of though is uh, Twilight Sparkle. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to lecture her. <laughs> oh wow! But didn't I just brought this up before? Like last episode or last few episode reviews with Gilda. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember about nature versus nurture and whatnot. Like, I think I uh-huh. brought something similar to this. Well, when you know the environment of the person that you're talking about or the character that you're talking about, you kind of understand where they come from and what they do and what their motivations are. So, yeah, I think that in this case, I, I did say that Mina is likable. I stand by what I said. I think she's mm-hmm. a likable character. 
Uh, I would like to know more about her, though. Well, same uh, I would love to see her in a few Yeah, days. yeah. I actually, I want to see her again because I don't know if this was intentional or not, but her character design reminds me a lot of Dragon Tales. <laughs> Probably. Like, she looks an awful lot like a Dragon Tales character, whose name I cannot remember right now, but holy cow, I was having this very heavy 80s, 90s cartoon vibe. To her, and I was like, this is actually pretty cool. I would like to, I actually would like to see more of her in the future, perhaps. That would be nice. I, I would prefer that to the Chinese knockoff, like dub dim sum, and I'm not <laughs> racist for saying that. Oh That's no. That's the name. That's what Larson told us, but her name is Crystal. Really? Yeah. Dim sum. Yeah, apparently it belongs to a fan, and here we go, derailing the review <laughs> once again. But it's um, this is warranted. Curse you, current events. No, no, it's, uh, we were, we were talking about this on episode number 174, and it was on the current topic, and Dimson came along. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, it, it, yeah, Dimson did, did did occur. Apparently, it's, it's a fan created character, and whoever was working on that restaurant decided to take it for their own advantage. Yeah, but hey, it's something current, and they thought nothing would come out, nothing would come out of it, because, a lot of people eat at a Chinese restaurant and those kind of things were meant for kids to, well, <laughs> color and doodle. Who knew Larson would be there? And, and who knew he'd be hungry an hour later? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, anyway, but so I think we're all in agreement that Mina is actually a pretty likable character. And I still stand by that this social justice warrior argument doesn't really apply to her. It yeah. doesn't. It oh the, oh god! It so doesn't. I have seen SJWs. I have dealt with SJWs. She is way too polite and way too smart to be mm-hmm. a social justice warrior. I, I I know what I said. I stand by that. <laughs> All right. SJWs are not very smart to begin with. No comment. Mm. But okay. So uh, Spike now has. Uh, is in the in the middle of a cross, crossroads. There, he he is either he, either does he support his people or does he go with Princess Luna? And it is at this point that Luna is like severely disappointed with Spike for like what doing some actual investigation on his part and doing what Luna wasn't doing. What are you talking about, Princess? <laughs> Well, what's funny is Spike is coming to them without any evidence. I mean, he's been swayed by Mina making a very realistic argument that, you know, you're just assuming a dragon did it because fire's involved. Uh, but what's funny is, by that same token, the Philadelphia police are about to lock down an entire community without any evidence. You try that in America. Oh. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there. Oh. We're not well, going to go there. I, I, no, I'm sorry. Current events, once again, we've had a lot of racial tension. You try yeah. anything like that, you are making one of the biggest mistakes in history. Yes, you definitely are. <clears throat> Something similar like that happened here in Malaysia in the past is against the Malays and Chinese, and it did not turn out well, no. So, Hard Case is an idiot. Right along, I like his attitude, you know, him him snarking on Luna that, you know, if you guys wrote something down, we wouldn't be in these situations. <laughs> but, uh, and also the line, Twilight would have liked you. <laughs> but uh, the cops in this, when they really start trying to take action, are the true antagonists. And not very sympathetic. <sighs> no, they really aren't. They really aren't. Uh <laughs> Which is kind of weird because they don't go with the option of the cops being actually behind the whole, you know, it, it could have easily been a setup, I but it's not a setup so. because, no, it could have easily been a setup because they're like, you just need one of the cops who has a beef against the dragons to go and say, hey, hey, these guys are the bad guys. We're going to put them in lockdown right now. They could have so easily done that. You just need to change, you just need to change Spike finding the fire snail to Spike finding a cop about to set something on fire, and then as he's about to set something on fire, Spike stops him, but not fast enough. Well, they debunked that in the first few pages because they, uh, I think Princess Luna or Spike asked, "Couldn't a unicorn do this with uh, magic?" 
and they say no, not with the whole thing. I, they they say it in the first few pages of the. Well, it doesn't need to be a unicorn. It could be a a earth pony with like uh, I don't know. Most of cocktails. Uh, much, much, and a, ca- a canister of gasoline or something. It could be no. It could be like the feathers, the 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 syrup trap from the Wild West comic. Remember that was highly flammable. <laughs> oh yeah. I think this is the part of the comic where I am kind of like, eh, you guys are going for like the weakest option. This is like, this is lame. This is really lame. Well, but I, they do set up a few things to make it not too not too out of the blue, like the third option. Which... Just because it's foreshadowed doesn't mean it's not lame. Yeah, it's I mean... foreshadowed and lame. It's both. <laughs> but but uh, hang on, I, I've been looking over the first few pages. Norman, can you tell me where they where they dismiss the unicorn option? Because I don't remember that. I I remember reading that part, but I don't remember where. It's in the first few pages, um, probably on page nine. Mostly, I just say all I see is them saying. We suspect a dragon because it's drawn because the fire marks are in a straight line. I have the only time I remember them saying it could have been a unicorn was Mina in the comic book shop mm. pointing out that just because it's fire doesn't mean there aren't fire based unicorns. At which point I then accused a fellow reviewer and had him arrested. <laughs> oh, poor Josh. And I, and I regret nothing, Josh. Do you hear me? Nothing. <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't know if they I don't know if they debunked the unicorn option, uh, as you remember. I, I mean, my memory is conflicting with yours. I think. I think I'm I think I'm derping, but yeah, I do remember that part, and I think Mina did say that. But uh, but either way, yeah, they they foreshadow. Well, Spike steps in a banana peel. That's the weird thing. It's not like actual slimy steps in. It's a banana peel. And then there's disgusting things in a city. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh wait, no, he says, you guys feel it, right? This carpet is sticky too. Gross. Did no one say, hmm, what is this sticky residue? Could it be a, well, we're going CSI. <laughs> okay. Yeah, need... but that's the thing. The CSI team sucks in this city. <laughs> I just need some pony to don shades and go, yeah! Uh, make terrible puns. And then if this it. was if this was CSI, they would have been like close up, close up, close up, whoosh, 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 flash, flash, flash. Now let's analyze this tissue. Even though it's going to take us an entire week, within the episode, it's going to be like one hour. <laughs> uh... You know, there was an episode where they actually kind of lampooned that. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because they are making like a reality show of the CSI and they are like, well, you know that this is going to take you like seven hours, right? And they are like, yeah, but when they edit it, it's going to be like 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds later, the sample is analyzed. <laughs> I uh, actually really like that episode. And we've diverted again. How does this keep happening? It's, uh, you know what? I am going to throw this as a criticism to the comic. It's so unfocused and kind of like boring in its own structure because you have this very interesting setup that they clearly do nothing with it. It's like, how can a comic about a police force made out of talking magical horses is investigating a crime that the prime suspect could be a dragon that lives in a bed, bedrock representation in the, in the middle of a city with skyscrapers? How can this be so boring? But it is. I, I remember reading through the comic. I actually, I think I actually fell asleep while reading through it. I won't say that it's boring. Boring is a terrible thing to say to a piece of Okay, work. okay. Let's not say boring. Let's just say uninspired. No, I don't know. Or is that even worse? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, to me, this is an okay comic. But before we give our final thoughts, let's just try to power through. Okay, well, we're okay. there. We're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. Because Luna's the spike... Had... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Luna's had ahead, to deal with a bunch of uppity cops who... Uh... Once again, that, that whole princess deference just seems like an on-off switch. Some, uh-huh. some, sometimes it's on and the princess is always right. Sometimes it's off and guys are rather emboldened against royalty. Well, you, mean, if you do this... think about it, that taxi guy in uh, Manhattan when Twilight asked for the cab... Wouldn't give it to her, like, yeah. Well, you know, you you respect the crown. You don't have to respect the individual, but you respect the crown. Yeah. But that doesn't mean the princess is always right, but you don't just say nuts to you. <laughs> anyway, and that's as much as I want to say on that. Again, I went on tirade last time. <laughs> so, dragons, 
the worst babysitters ever. <laughs> Why? Because after Spike discovers the, the magical third option fire snail, the dragons that rush to the rescue of the burning building, one has a baby in one of those baby carrier pouches. Oh, yeah, Dad. Yeah, please, no, please, bring the infant into the raging inferno. I'm sure they'll find a good toy. Hey, baby dragons can survive molten lava, so this one can too. Look at Spike. He survived molten lava, fought diamond dogs on his own. I think he... I think this little baby dragon can take on Chuck Norris for all I care. <laughs> I mean, this... This... Yeah, no, but think about it. They are stern, resilient, and their scales are made out of iron. I think it's no problem that, yeah, they can deal with fire. Come on, they are fire. They are death. I'm pretty sure that they can take it. But I, I'm expecting next that they're uh, they're going to... And say, yeah, go ahead and lick that electrical shock socket. Your dragon is cool. <laughs> no, sorry. don't do that. And I'm sorry, the only person who I will accept can battle Chuck Norris is Sagata Sanjiro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's an awesome guy. Pure manly epicness. Mm hmm. And he wants you to play the Sega Saturn. And once again, we have gone <laughs> off topic because that's how we roll. Indeed. Yeah. But anyway, Dragon Name, Saber... The MBS show sidetracks. <laughs> anyway, dra Dragon's, uh, Dragon Save the Day. Although, wow, I am only just now noticing this. What? Uh, oh. let's see here. Let's see here. What, what page is this? What page? 20, 23. 23. Oh. 23. I kind of jumped ahead. Just the artwork on the topmost panel where Spike is saying, quick, get those qualities out of there. You see the gray and green uh, dragon who's coming out of the doorway right above the word bubble? <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> I don't know if, like, his apron is weirdly positioned or if they accidentally only drew one pant leg. It looks like the dude's wearing a thong. <laughs> it does. I, oh, my. Oh, my, indeed. I just, uh, bah, uh that. No, so, I, I think they have about dragons be. that they are well endowed. Hey. I thought I thought Luna burping fire would never leave my brain. Now there's not enough bleach in the world. <laughs> no, I, I think this is just the dragon's um, front, like how Spike has his colored in. Uh, you know, I, I pray. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, well, I thought I'd just put that out there while the baby dragon saves a, a, a foal. Yes, awesome. it's just, I just truly dragons are the warrior race. <laughs> Anyway, oh, mm. also, also, Cheerilee's twin sister is apparently there. Oh, yeah. After Luna shouts every pony awake, the pony in the left-hand corner yeah, is yeah. Cheerilee's color scheme. Mm -hmm. True that. It could be um, Cherry Blossom, probably. Well, there you go. Well, but with anyway. this, the dragon saved the day. The, it's proved that the, the responsible behind the crimes wasn't a dragon or a pony, but a fire snail. And every conflict gets resolved. There, there was a conflict to begin with, and with that, the comic ends. No, 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 that's no, no. Very you much the... one more important Wait, no? thing. You forgot one more important oh, thing. Oh, we forgot one thing that we didn't even mention. The fact that Mina is a helpless shipper and a massive <laughs> fan of Luna. And, so and we, yeah, we should talk, we should talk about this. And I think we should talk about this for like, before we reach the final conclusions or anything. We need to discuss this, this thing. Yes. Because this is the one thing that I just, I kept like scratching my head about this. I was like, are we really, are they really going there? Are they really going there? Oh my God, they are. <laughs> so yeah, apparently shipping wars exist in the My Little Pony universe. <laughs> That hey. is like if I decide to ship the princess of Monaco with Prince Charlie from like the royal family. That's like, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Oh god, James. It's James. this weird or weird, what? Or, or Jack Frost with Elsa? <laughs> I've seen it. I, I've, uh -huh. I've seen I, cosplays, I've seen fan art. I, I rather, I rather ship Jack Frost with the Easter Bunny, but that is just me. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, uh frenemies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, well, you know, you're a celebrity. You're big in the public eye. They want to know who you're dating. They want to know who you'd be the dream couple. They want to know what stupid, stupid names they can come up by combining your 
your first name, J Lo. Somna. <laughs> I've just, I did. No comment. No comment. So yeah, public figures, they probably ship them like a polar, ship it like a FedEx, shake it like a Polaroid. But yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think I find it adorable. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't, cute. I am not, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I'm just surprised. I'm like, wow, they are actually doing this? And it's actually kind of funny. The way that she goes complete fangirl is very <laughs> akin to how some bronies go fanboy when, oh my god, this stuff is a new main. Oh my god, I love you. You don't you voice every single great, act, great character in this show. You're great. You can just voice the show by yourself. Oh my god, please. Draw my OC. No. <laughs> uh, Wait, you were, so, surprised. so you were at BabsCon. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you say hello? Uh, uh, James uh, didn't want to freak you out. I didn't want to go crazy. <laughs> no, uh, uh, this but, show, that's a requirement. Oh, true that. Yeah, that is true. That is true. But, yeah, so... Okay, I did say what I had to think about the... About the, the what did, did you guys get the chance to speak or did I overwhelm the, co- the, 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 the podcast again? I usually do that. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to let Silva go first. Uh, are we talking final thoughts or just the shipping? The shipping. You know what? Let's ship in, the shipping. Yeah, let's talk the about shipping. the shipping. And uh, then we you get know, final thoughts. You know, that shipping at the end of the day, I think it's actually kind of fun. You, you know, crazy couples are even more fun. I've seen Twilight and Sombra images, and they've actually been really well done. So, and it's kind of fun. The more outlandish, the more you sense, ah, they're just having fun with it. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. it, it's when people feel threatened that they're, someone is disregarding or, or discrediting their favorite ship that they start to bring a hostile element. Mm-hmm. So Mina's just doing the fangirl thing. She faints when she sees Luna. The door is left open for Spike to come back and ship with Mina. Mm-hmm. Even, even though she might be right up on the cradle a little, know what I mean? We don't know how old Mina is compared uh, to Spike. <laughs> uh, no comment. And, uh, you know, shipping in my eyes is supposed to be harmless and fun, and this seems mm-hmm. that way. Yeah. And this scene to me, I like it, because the build-up that Mina showed at the very beginning, like, you came here with Princess Luna? Yee, so excited! And for her to get to meet her idol, or her, well, I'm gonna say idol, is something fun and exciting and special. It's like, the three of us, get to meet and talk to Lauren Faust. That would be something special. I know KP got her moment. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Her... Oh, God, I don't even want to say the line anymore. He, <laughs> he noticed her. That's as far as I'm going. To <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but... <laughs> I, can nev- I can never have a normal conversation because people use that line. <laughs> what? What? Senpai noticed me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, okay, man. <laughs> that, that, that's for you. That's for you. <laughs> but, but it's worth, it, sh- worth it. Worth it. Oh, James, don't bleed out. But anyway, but, but for the shipping here. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this. <laughs> worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Uh, but for Senpai is not in me with his 44 cal. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! A nuclear bomb not the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing on the episode, show, the part of James going to be... <laughs> Here now is the end of the fellowship as I beat you senseless. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Does that mean that the ring is going to be taken to Sauron and the hobbies to Eitzengard? <laughs> and then he'll... And then people will want his to notice them and be like, you know what? I don't want to conquer this world anymore. It's a silly place. Oh, my cheeks. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Norman. Don't worry. Go drink some water. Take off your your false teeth. You're an old man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I said, the shipping part, that that was in this scenario, that, that was just cute. <laughs> that was just her fulfilling her fangirl moment. Who knew that she would ship Luna and Sombra. There's a comic about... No, there's a fanfic about that somewhere on film fiction if you look hard for it. Uh, there's a, there's probably a fan fiction for every shipping imaginable at this point. Spike Rarity OTP. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about fi- film fiction right now because my my purpose to use film fiction right now is completely personal. I'm not going to... Uh, <laughs> <all> right. <clears throat> anyway, but, James, yeah. final thoughts. 
Final thought. Oh, you're talking me to give final thoughts. Okay, now we are going to give final thoughts. Get away from all that awkwardness. Uh, so, Silver, final thoughts on this very, re- very unfocused, very weird, very, very oddly put together review of this comic. Well, you, obviously, you... obviously, it's inspired a lot of divergent thoughts in us as we we cite references and make jokes. But we're kind of irreverent like that. I do think that it tackled a hard topic with. Uh, without dumbing it down, and yet it wasn't able to follow through with the conclusion. I really wish it could have given a definitive, it was a pony who did this, how how could you just blindly assume? Or, yes, it was a dragon, but we needed other dragons to save the day. It's not all, it's not absolute one and zero. I also like some of the characters. I did like Mina. Not so big a fan of Hardcase. There, there's fun to be had, but there seems like the pros and the cons really bounce off one another so that you're going to have to read this and decide for yourself because it's, it's going to hit people differently. But there's a lot to think about and consider, and I do enjoy stories that invoke that kind of thinking. Having been so frustrated by Princess Spike last, last episode uh, or last review, I'm happy to have one that gives more positive thoughts. Well, as for me, I enjoyed this comic. The pros and cons were there. I won't say that I would give this a 10 out of 10, but I would just say that it's worth a read. The characters like Mina and some of the police characters like, um, who, who was it again? Uh, Hard Case and, yeah, and Hard Case, Ride Along. Ride Along and Homestar. They were fun. Right. They were... Well. Oh, Ride Along was Homestar. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, Ride Along oh. was Homestar. Yeah. Oh, I want him to be Homestar. He was just so kooky. One of these days, there's going to be a pony named, named Homestar, and it's going to be a boxer, so it's going to be fine. As, uh, <laughs> as long as it's not named Homestuck. Oh, 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 no. Oh, We're God, go. no. There will be a demon. Either. It will be the final boss of uh, 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 an issue or something like that. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. But overall, I had fun with this. Yeah, with even with the glaring issue of the snail, it's kind of out of left field. But the seeds were planted from the very beginning. Just it's just like if it was Spike to discover it in a very heroic manner instead of hey, what's this trail? Oh, snail! Oh, it's burning everything. Uh, th- that would have well, I don't know. To me, it's okay, but it's not the best. Uh, three out of five. Well, in in my opinion, this is probably one of the most escapable comics because it doesn't add anything to the universe. It doesn't add mm-hmm. anything to the characters. Uh, if anything, read it for the character of Mina because she is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And any fans of cartoons from the nineties and the eighties, they will enjoy her because she's uh, she's like a very modern take on this kind of character from that era. I think it could have been handled better. But then again, many things on this TV show, on the TV show, could have been handled better, and I still enjoy them. So I think that my reasons to not really recommend this, because I don't want to say I don't recommend this comic. I just say, if you are not sold on the character, or if you are expecting a Friends Forever comic, don't even bother, because this is not a Friends Forever comic. It's not. Mm. It's like, Friends Forever implies that the characters work together. Or that they have a strong enough connection that even if they are separated, they can still uh, work off each other's energies, even if they are not in the same scene at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know what? I, uh, Agnes Harboska's artwork is lovely. Like I said, I think I like her artwork more than I like uh, Andy Price's. And I really like Andy Price's art, but I think Agnes Harboska is a bit more appealing to me. Oh, it's going uh, to you? Uh, yes, yes. Agnes and Tony Fleeks, actually. They are becoming, in my, in my opinion, much better artists than uh, than than Andy is. Well, Andy is a bit, you know, on the on the relaxed side when it comes to doing the artwork. Mm. Uh, I think that Tony, Tony, and Agnes that have a lot more personality, that they distance themselves from the TV show, from the TV show model, uh, but they know how to keep it personal and relatable. I think I did talk about this before. I did talk about this, how I was like conflicted about my uh, my feelings towards Sandy Price's art uh, while talking about somebody else's. And I think it was on the Bab Seed and Gravity. Yeah, Jay Fos- Foskett. Yeah, Jay Foskett is also one of my favorites too, but I, I'm not sure. Okay, no, never mind. <laughs> focus. God damn it. I'm the one who is on focus on this review. I just noticed that. 
Escape this one, my, my personal opinion. Not a bad comic, but I wouldn't give it a recommendation either. Like, no, you go to the next one. The next comic is going to be a lot more fun to talk about. And I really cannot wait to talk about Friends Forever issue number 15. That is going to be a riot of a review. What's that one again? I forgot. The it character. was the Mayor Mayor and Applejack. Oh, that one. Oh, oh that, that one. is in my top 10, top 5 maybe of the Friends Forever comics. Wow. It's absolutely hilarious. That's strongy, alright? Well, well, yes. I, I don't know if top 10, we're only at what? 18 issues? Mm hmm. <laughs> In that yep. case, it will go for, like, top five. Maybe it's oh. crutching the top five. Okay, well, I don't mean to take away from your mind. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just... No, but I am, I'm willing to hear about other perspectives because, you know, when it comes to bureaucracy... Oh, what is my katana? <laughs> oh, anyway, wow. that's it for today's review. Um, unless we have something else to talk about. Guys, do you have anything else to say about the comic? Nope. Not about this comic, but for those who want to see, I think, a better presentation of empowerment, there's Jeremy Whaley also does a comic called Prince Less, where the main heroine is a, a black princess who go, who has her own adventures. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you just do a search for Prince Less, all one word, you will discover it. And I think it's worth a read. Mm -hmm. Because this is obviously something he very much cares about, and if stories aren't used as an expression of ideas, then there's not much point to them. And as for me, I would say buy the trade. The trade is a much better combo because you'll get a few more issues in the trade. Like, I think one trade has four comics. So, yeah, if you want to buy it or if you want to read it but don't want to read digital form, go get a trade. You'll get four comics in one. Yes, pinky. <laughs> anyway... I had to do that. <laughs> well, uh, next we so next week uh, we should go back to review episodes of the TV show, right? Mm -hmm. So next week, let me go grab my wiki to know what we're going to be reviewing. Party it will poopy. be episode yes, episode eleven of season five, titled "Party Pooped," written by Nick Confalone, with story by Jason Thiessen and Jim Miller. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of Jim Miller, Jason Thiessen stories being provided in this season. Hmm. Wonder what it's going to be about. And I wonder what will we have to say about it. But that's going to be for the next review. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Thank you guys so much for coming into this web zone and talking about ponies and comics and random stuff. Enough apologies for the unfocusedness. I think I wasn't all that big of a fan of this comic as I, as I thought. I remember liking it more than I did that I didn't like it. Huh. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you all next time on the next MBS show reviews. Have a good one everybody. Bye. Bye bye. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> you know what? I think that sound box has completely like brainwashed me. Now I'm so happy to hear it. It's like <laughs> Pavlovian Jeez. behavior at its own, at its best. You'll hear something new. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. No, stop convincing me to buy a Wii U. I don't want to buy that. <laughs>